We had our story time up there. You just got story time? Yeah, we found just your story, Just let that right? sit there for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, here we are, finally getting on, guys. For those of you that jumped on our email and are out there already, we apologize. We got... This is a very detailed painting this time. This could be a two or three day or before it's completed. But somebody is going to thoroughly enjoy this with their membership. So it's... Uh, We'll kick it over the screen there in a second as the queen finishes straightening a few things up. Again, these are story time non-tutorials. These are here. We're doing a promotion for our membership. This is in December of 2023. Because you're watching this after this. We ran a promotion that gave a Ginger Cook original painting non-tutorial if you signed up for a year, two years, or three years. And with that in mind, Depending on the doing. size, right? <laughs> Depending on the size of what we were painting, yeah? Yep. Yeah, how many years they got? Ready to kick over, boss? I am. All right. You are there. Okay, so um, uh, we're going to start our story time with just random stories, not any particular time in history, but things that just come to mind that these are ran ran just random things that I remember, you know, over random rambling. 75 years. How's that? Oh, these are some new stuff. Some people might want to know about the dishwasher story. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's true. That's We Maybe left that you last Monday with the, last, last time. With the, we did, and that, that was a... Um, anybody's wanting to know what I'm painting on, this is a canvas board with absorbent ground. Um, just because people are going to ask, and that's what it is. We'll start off with that, right? And because I have all this detail in the middle, I'm going to block this in as I tell you the story. Sometimes there may be a pause in the conversation because I'm thinking I have to really think thin about this, you know? Remember yeah, that thing a, from the cartoon? This is a complex one. Uh, 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 John and I both watched, I think, same cartoons. I'll be the deputy dog. Remember that deputy dog? Oh, I love deputy said, dog. I'll be the thinner around here, Baba Louie, and don't you forget it. Remember? Don't you forget it. And, um, of course, who didn't love Yogi Bear? Yeah? Yogi and Boo Boo? Hey, Boo Boo. That's go a Yellowstone Park. Basket. Gonna get on the picnic of baskets at Yellowstone Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and they do do that, those bears. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to uh, just keep putting out paint and doing that. So the first story that comes to mind is, I guess what happened, I bought this house with my uh, ex-husband, George, in, um, in 1980. We moved in, and we put a dishwasher in there, and I've replaced it once. Maybe twice, probably twice, because we probably placed the one that was there. So this would be maybe the fourth dishwasher. And the, we, what John and I discovered when, um, when trying to um, upgrade your appliances in an old house is the codes have all changed. Now, back in the 80s, I don't, Houston was one of those, um, unlike California, which had um, Codes up the wa up the wazoo. Do you remember that oh, expression? Oh yeah, oh, up, up the wazoo. Up the wazoo, right? Um, which is your butt, right? Um, oh, is it? It's your I butt. I knew what it was. Wazoo is your butt. Really? Well, you could Google that. What was the wazoo? <laughs> That's what I always thought it was, right? What was the wazoo? <laughs> People want to know now. What was the wazoo? Well, okay. Um, still looking for the white paint. Here we go. Where did that go? Okay, here, oh, here it is. It's getting shorter, that's why. So, anyhow, uh, so there had to be, we had, I had to make a counter adjustment for the last one, just had to chip away a little counter. We're talking the dishwashers. The, the dishwashers now, not the wazoos. <laughs> and no chipping any wazoos. <laughs> All wazoos are safe with us. Well, maybe. I, I must not go there. But nonetheless, we're talking about dishwashers, not wazoos, unless someone remembers what the um, No, we got the earliest 
use of the word wazoo, the phrase up your wazoo, is from Berkeley in 1961. And Thank what you, it, Liz. And what did it mean, Liz? Anus. What? Anus. Your yeah, butt. That's what I thought. Didn't I? See, I, I wasn't too far off on that, really. Everybody knows what the wazoo is. Well, not everybody knows. that. Listen, if you lived in Sweden like Mona, you would have no clue what the wazoo is. You think is. Mona didn't know? Oh, Mona, watch them and leave a comment. <laughs> I, I don't think Mona knows. Oh. All right, anyways. So, uh, that's all right. So, what we're talking about, the, the, the fact that the dishwasher was going to be installed in the um, uh, in the house uh, it, it, and it's now it, which didn't have any codes at all Houston was like the wild west that, they, that you could just build any old piece of junk and nobody cared apparently because it was very clear that they you know they they were very relaxed let's put it that way conversely when Colby and I were building our house in California. I told you this was going to be sort of a random group of thoughts here because one thought leads to another. You know how that is, right? <laughs> Colby, and I, Colby and I designed our own house. We didn't use an architect because we were stupid. You know, we <laughs> thought we could do it. And then Colby, Cinnamon's dad, that's our, you know, Cinnamon's dad, um, had me totally bamboozled. That's another good word, right? Bamboozled. I love bamboozled. Bamboozled into believing he knew anything. He was very congruent about what he thought he knew, okay? He knew everything. And um, got a little bit like George, but worse. <laughs> and so he, he absolutely had me convinced that, um, that he knew something about building. And he, oh, I know all about building. I worked in construction with my uncle when I was in high school. Well, <laughs> pushing a wheelbarrow is not exactly giving you construction knowledge. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't think that counts, just personally. Just, and so when we started to build our house in California, I know we get back to the dishwasher, but this is all tied in. Trust me. When we started It'll come to build, back around. when we started to build our house in California, um, when it came to the, he says, "Well, I've done the plumbing. Why don't you do the electric?" And I'm going, "Well, how, how would I know the electric, right? Because he really didn't know anything." So. And he didn't know plumbing either, because when the plumber came for our, to give us the, the, when the inspector came, Californians have inspectors for everything. I'm telling you what, they want to see your permit for cut, you know, for, for chopping up your land and making a house pad. Who, who allowed you to do that? Don't care if you own it. Who said you could just take a bulldozer in here? And we never got a bulldozer for that pond. I'm surprised they didn't arrest us, you know. But I mean, I'm telling you, they, they were that kind of, they were sticklers. That's another good word, sticklers. For nonsense. So anyhow, sticklers are not, not That's not for nonsense. Well, they were sticklers for for. They want they, they want facts. They want really. Back, go ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um. So when we when they we put our little laundry room in washer and dryer, um, the guy looked at it, and and said. You failed. And Colby said, well, how did we fail? He says, well, you've got about eight things wrong here. Totally wrong. Not against code. See, because they actually had codes in California. Okay, back in, uh, let's see, when would that have been? Um, 70s. Um, they actually had codes way back then. But unfortunately, in the 80s, Houston didn't seem to have the same kind of codes for their builders. That Anyway, because uh, now... Of course, uh, there are more. Th the longer people live, the more government likes to interfere with things, and so there's, um, <laughs> you know, they always they have to have something to do, and so then they eventually come up with stuff like this. Well, anyway, this is just me being, being philosophical, but um, not meant to offend anybody who's pro-government, you know, because I'm certainly not against government, and in fact, I appreciate the codes. But anyway. When the dishwasher guy finally arrived, because he came yesterday, because he said, for a quick catch-up, for those of you who didn't, didn't know the dishwasher story, you know, I don't want to start in the middle of the story, because that's what my daughter used to do all the time when she was a kid. She'd start, mom, 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 and then she'd start telling me all this stuff, and I'm going, um, 
I have no idea what you just said because she forgot to tell me the beginning. So I'm going to tell you the beginning, right? So the beginning of all this was that um, John, our dishwasher broke a few days ago, like last week. Like it died. It just died. It quit. It just stopped. It had been working for years and like how many years was it? It worked, John. Uh, we figured it was 15. 15 years, and then it finally just one day just said, "That's it for me. I'm done." Really, it was sort of one of no those. No warning. Nothing. Nothing. So we said, "Well, you know, we'll just have to get a new dishwasher." And we looked online, and we. Um, and we finally made a decision to get one from Best Buy because of um, we bought other things from them and it had pretty good service, okay? So we thought, why not, right? And so we made an appointment. They were supposed to deliver it Tuesday, right? And they, then they finally said, that we'll, it will be here between... Um, they start off with 7 to 7. 7 to 7, and then finally they narrowed it down between 4 and 6, yeah? Yep. Okay, that was what it was narrowed down to. And so we didn't have to do anything um, particularly, right, mm -hmm. because... We had to be ready. Because th they said it was coming between 4 and 6, so we didn't know what part of 4 and 6 that was. So we basically... Um, well, it was really 2 to just, 6. We did, it was well, a 4-hour window, 2 to 6. 4-hour window. So, so, we, so we sat there downstairs uh, where we could you know, hear the doorbell and... Um, uh, Waited and worked on the computers. I designed a bunch of stuff. I designed this painting. Um, takes a long time to design these things, you guys. Um, when I started this, you know, guess what? I'll paint you a painting if you sign up for a year. Um, I, I was quite surprised at how many people took us up on it. <laughs> 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 Which is fine. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but nonetheless, one is, right? So, uh, anyhow, the um, the upshot of it was is that we waited and waited, and then, you know, it was like almost 6 o'clock, and, and nobody came, so we called this number. And I do not believe we got anybody in this country that was talking to us. I kind of tell from the accent that they live somewhere else without going into where they might have lived, yeah? And the, the guy sat there, and he looked us, you know, it took a while to get anybody. He looks us up, and then he says, um, well, the lady already came, and you weren't home. She rang the doorbell, and she left. Now, here's the thing. We've got a camera on the front door, and we were all sitting there waiting for the, why on earth would, you know, would we not answer the bell? I mean, it just, it was so ridiculous. And, you know, and the guy says, well, he, had, he told us what our house looked like. Yeah, he did the old describe the house. Describe the house thing trick, but the problem is you can get that with Google Earth, right? So he had the address correct, but um, um, that was about it, okay? So anyhow, the uh, upshot of it was that, that they never came, and then we called back again, and then the lady said, oh, no, nobody's come. We got another person from this country. Nobody's come. And um, they'll be coming, just be patient. Well, we want to talk to a supervisor. No need for that. You know, that need to talk to a supervisor. We just, just hang in there. Someone will come. You, you're still have now it showed online that we had a closed ticket. Didn't really matter what it showed online because this lady insisted that somebody was coming. So then. And we fell for it. And we fell for it again. And um, we, we absolutely fell for it, yeah. So then, there's a then, right? Uh, six o'clock comes and go goes, so we just give up. And I said we either had to, you know, we could either cancel the order, but we got a pretty good dish price on that dishwasher. Didn't really want to cancel the order, so we, we wanted the dishwasher. And so one of the things John and I said, and we wanted the dishwasher. We needed, yeah. So one of the things John and I said together when nobody showed up, okay, for our um, uh, to our house, I said, well. You know, we always want the right people to come and do work for us. So just probably, my guess is that this was not the right person to, um, to be, that, that, that that would have been a bad technician. And we always want good ones. It's just like when you miss an airplane. John and I never bitch. We figure we don't want to be on the airplane that goes down. There's so a reason that we miss it. It's a reason you missed it. Some other reason, we'd just go with that, right? 
We go with the flow, baby. Go with the flow, right? So, anyway, the, um, so I, I just, you know, counted to 10, got over being mad, and um, there we have, there you have it. So, then, yesterday comes around, and it's that same window, and nobody's come. And I'm thinking, oh, man, right? And I'm busy paint, making painting designs, thinking nobody's come. And uh, then long about almost 6, honest to gosh, almost oh, 6. Oh, yeah. It was quarter to 6. Quarter to 6. The phone rings, and someone says, I'm on my way. We're thinking, oh, my word, right? So uh, this guy pulls up in this kind of old truck and, and a trailer, and um, and he says, you the one that wants the dishwasher? I'm going, you betcha, you know? So I was, you know. So then, he, that, so he comes, and um, and he he brings in the dishwasher, and uh, rolls it in a big box, and he looks at my old dishwasher, and then tell him what he said, John, because it's so interesting. Oh, he went into a whole spiel before he even started. Took it out of the box. Even before he took it out of the box, because once it's open, you own it. So. He looked at the old dishwasher, pulled it out. He goes, you see that pipe you have back there? We have a gas pipe that comes in. He goes, the new dishwashers are flat. This may not fit in there properly, and it's going to stick out like three or four inches. And you have no electric. The electric has to be, you know, has to be brought up to code instead of direct wiring and wind up in through a regular outlet. And now, he said that was a new code. Though I talked to uh, Becky this morning because she had a new dishwasher put in in and after her house flooded in 2018 and they wired hers in no problem they uh, wired it directly directly so did the guy lie to us i don't know but it, go ahead continue the story john because well, it's good i'd rather have it the way he did it so it doesn't matter yeah so he goes but once it's open we own it I said, that's fine. I, I'll put a piece of wood over. I, I can do something to make it look pretty. So he went through the whole thing, got it all done, slipped in there beautifully, fit like a glove. And I go, you know, we're supposed to have this done Tuesday. He goes, uh, Tuesday. Oh, that was I think Rebecca or something. She wouldn't have done it. She would she, not she, have done she, it. She would have just gone away and said, no, it can't be done. I left you. She was, Yeah, she would just would not have done it. Yeah. So I said, well, that's why we waited for you. We knew this. So we got a really good person, which we were very lucky about. And, um, and a nice dishwasher. And a beautiful dishwasher. In fact, when you opened it up, it was so nice. But I said, is that what we ordered? Because, I mean, when you open this dishwasher up, you guys. It's got lights in the there. Lights, it lights up in the side. It's got arms coming everywhere. It's like... The, the, um, it would kill a small pet if you put them in there. It would drown in <laughs> seconds, okay? Okay, don't worry, people. We're not going to do that. Nobody's putting a pet in there. I'm just saying, there's just so many, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing, isn't it? And then it has all the smart stuff. It does all the stuff. Yeah, so. it has sensors in there. Apparently, you can put it in automatic mode. Because sometimes, it, we have very little dishes sometimes, and sometimes we have a lot. And I said, I'd like to be able to run it. And he goes, with this little baby, just put them in there. And you put an automatic, it'll sense what's in there and just take care of it. I said, okay. So I did it last night. We had like five things in there just to kind of test it. Did a beautiful job. Yeah, so that was a happy ending to that, to that story. Just want to mention that. And that was an LG. We yeah. have a lot of LG products. Yeah. No, some and time her ago. name's Dorothy. Yeah, John's names are Dorothy. All the appliances now have names. Yep. The other one did not have a name. As John pointed out, it didn't have a personality, so it didn't get a, a name. Which is interesting how we decide what's its name. Now, it's kind of like the French, you know, and the Spanish, when they have um, the table is a he or a she, or everything has a feminine. Or, um, and, 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 and we're very modern, and everything's a they for us, right? <laughs> Just everything's a day. It's, it's a table. It's not a she table or a he table. It's a table. 
You know what I mean? And how anybody decided something was a she or it's just, and then you have to know that stuff. Just saying, right? Anyway. Um, so the, the dishwasher story ended up with a happy ending. Happy ending, and we're happy with the dishwasher, and thank goodness the guy, you know, we got the guy that actually knew what he was doing. Hmm? Yep. And we, we have welcomed Dorothy into the family. Yes. So, yeah, we were very, very pleased about that. So, anyway, that was the story about the, you know, random story about the dishwasher, because we felt like we had to catch you all up on it. Kind of, kind of the, uh, the saga. Because it's interesting how, you know, how things, you know, work sometimes. And you just never know, do you, John? You never do. So anyway, the, um, don't want to lose this line. So random stories. I was telling Becky this morning kind of a fun story about when Cinnamon was a little kid. I don't know if she'll think this is funny, but it's hysterically funny anyway, right? When she was like, she's just a very smart little kid. Still is smart, very smart kid, right? She was, showed, showed she was even when she was small. And um, like I remember getting some a babysitter so we could go to the movies. And um, And I had some of the first I purchased the first disposable diapers. Back then, everybody had a diaper service. Oh, yeah, I remember those days. They had a diaper service, and I, they had just come out with disposable diapers. So, um, um, I, of course, I had them. They were called Huggies, and they're not the Huggies that you have today. For instance, they worked so well that one time she and I, she was a toddler, and she, she was um, in a department. We were shopping somewhere, I think, in a clothing store, a little boutique clothing store. And a turd fell right out of her diaper onto the floor. <laughs> Just They didn't really hug, right? The expression of the people in the store was priceless, you know, because I was kind of embarrassed, but, you know, heck, you know, I did. <laughs> I think her grandmother was more horrified, you know. But anyway, we didn't use the cloth diapers, though people still did. And um, you were on the leading edge. We were on the leading edge. So we had this baby. She had this babysitter, and um, she's a teenager, probably going in high school. You know, one of my friend's daughters, and um, she had her convinced that her diapers were, I, oh, I bought some di emergency diapers um, in case uh, you couldn't get them anymore, right? You know, we lived in Aspen at the time. It was a very real possibility, storms or some other reason why diapers might not be available, right? So, um, so we had, I had some emergency and I, think I figured I could always use them as cleaning rags um, later, yeah. So she had she had that lady w looking all over the house for d extra diapers. Just totally had her conned. And she was a conner. She was a conner. She was a, just very congruent kid, and conned a lot. Just had a great sense of humor, but she, even as a kid, she thought that was funny, but. So um, her dad and I didn't work. We stayed home, and um, we we didn't work. He he just we just did projects. I know that sounds crazy, but um, hit, we had a workshop in the basement in Aspen. And um, this is wrong. I'm going to just take this out. That's in there wrong. And. Um, you know, he had, we had a workbench. I had a place to paint, and he had this big, long workbench to, uh, to do projects on and tools and all that stuff, and our laundry room was down there in the basement. And I 
Uh, let's see, where was I going with the basement story? Again, I told you I might have to stop occasionally when I have to give this a oh, little that's thought. that's okay. You know, so give, give this a little thought. So we had this, we had, we, nobody had anything like that. This condo, we turned this whole basement in this condo into this marvelous workshop. And um, like I say, we had workbenches and cupboards. And I painted all the cupboards, beautiful flowers all over the cupboards, big giant flowers, kind of almost abstract flowers, um, which was kind of cool. And... Um, Anyway, so we so said we had a basement. Cinnamon. So Cinnamon uh, uh, grew up with parents that were both home, um, which was nice for her. I mean, it really was. That was very nice for her. And two story condo with a basement, two bedrooms upstairs. And by that time, we had got rid, got rid of the renters who used to live there. And um, since I, we were married, I was married five years before Cin Cinnamon was born. And um, uh, so one day, Cinnamon comes down the stairs and into the living room. And she's walking kind of funny. And I look down. And she has, bless her little heart, she has uh, two of her dad, that dad's condoms, one on each foot. And they're kind of Perfect loose, slippers. and they're sticking up a little bit, right? <laughs> she said she thought they were slippers. And I don't know how she found them, but, um, you know, I mean, she had to get them out of the packages, right? She came in packages. They just weren't lying around loose, right? And anyway, that was hilariously funny, I thought. You know, anyway, just kids, the weird things they do. So anyhow, so, you know, moving right along here with the random stories. So Beck and I were, uh, you know, just talking about, you know, things that I remember from when the kid was growing up on the ranch and we had rattlesnakes. Um, in California on our property and you know uh, I'm not a big fan of a big fan of snakes I never had any come in the house the only time we ever had any rattlesnakes come in the house was the ones that cinnamon actually killed a rattlesnake with a weed eater she was about 10 and then she and her dad went outside and um, with the rattlesnake, and they p pinned it up on the fence, and then they proceeded to skin it. I promise you, they did this. It's so disgusting. Proceeded to skin it, and um, and then they took the um, the skin. Was it the skin? And put it in the refrigerator. Or they dried the skin and put the snake in the refrigerator. They did something with it. But that snake was in my refrigerator. And, and I threw a fit at both of them and explained that there was never going to be any snakes in the refrigerator, ever. Didn't care what kind of project or how marvelous they all thought that was and back to nature and they could all keep it. But there was no snakes in the refrigerator. <laughs> just just couldn't believe that they... But you know, she was, she was a gutsy kid. I mean, a lot of kids would have just... I was the kind of kid that if you'd started skinning snakes, I would have been gone, right? Just whiplash we had watching me how fast I would have moved away from that silliness, right? But anyway, so they, but those were the kind of the only times we, we, we had the snakes, but you really didn't, um, you really didn't see them that much. Um, but, but we did have them. This absorbent ground is kind of fun to paint this on. You know that? There's a lot of bleeding in it here. Well, this particular painting lends itself well to it. Whereas the last time you did the absorbent ground, that wasn't really the proper painting for it. No, and this one kind of kind of works for that. You're right. Yeah. 
So, <clears throat> anyway. But you just need a little brush here. Got to preserve all the lines in this. So, <clears throat> back to um, Back to random stories. I started smoking when I was 10. 10? 10. My parents, um, now interesting, neither one of my parents smoked. My, my mother didn't take up smoking until she was way after I'd moved out of the house and she said she did it to, um, um, to help her, because she'd have to sit down and relax. Or maybe I was in high school when she took it up. But I took it up smoking when my, my dad, the judge, never smoked. Okay? Adopted parents. They never smoked. And But we had, they had um, rented a house in Washington State up on Hood's Canal from some people. It was a it was a cabin. It was a real dump, I thought, you know, just not to be unkind, but it was kind of a dump. <laughs> just, you know, well, yeah, it was a dump. There was no question about it. It was a dump. But, you know, good enough. It was an old cabin, right? So how good did it have to be? It was probably built in the 30s and showed it. And um, My sister and I didn't stay the whole summer up there because they took summers off. I think we were still going to camp, but somehow we ended up summer camp. But somehow we ended up for a few days on Hood's Canal, and my brother Jensen went up there too. And um, so we, um, uh, we were just, there was a, a kind of a path that led down to a rocky beach. And there were all these, you know, oyster shells, real oysters on the beach. And uh, for some reason, uh, my sister and I thought it would be gobs of fun to smoke and learn to blow smoke rings um, <clears throat> down at the beach, which is what we did. So we would we'd go down there and see the beach. It wasn't very big, and there was a little um, there was a little um, like an old shed boathouse thing with no boat. So we were down there during the, you know, looking at, uh, breaking open um, oysters, looking for pearls. This kind of mass, I think breaking open is not the word. We were massacring oysters down there at the beach. Sort of a scorched earth with the oysters, uh, looking for pearls because we were kids uh, unsupervised. Yeah? And, you know, there, I said that about my parents, but that, that's what how it was. So any other um, we st <coughs> so I started smoking then and and, and and actually mastered and I don't know where we got the cigarettes. Somebody in the house must have been smoking. Maybe my brother Jensen smoked. He was it. He would have been. That's going to ask that. He would have been seventeen from? or something. He he might have had cigarettes and you know. Uh, he might have been smoking. So, um, which is fine, you know. So anyway, we got the cigarettes, my sister and I, and anyway, we learned to blow smoke rings uh, down there by the by the um, by, by the, the the rocky beach and the and the, and the dead oysters. Okay. <laughs> well, they weren't dead till we got there. Uh, and then I, okay, and then, 
So when I got back to home, I didn't have any access to cigarettes for a while because my parents didn't smoke, so that was fun. And I didn't live with my brothers, so I didn't have any access to them. But um, when I was uh, 16, I went to boarding school in uh, Phoenix, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. And I forged myself a smoking per per permit. And For high school? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And uh, just my parents wouldn't have given it to me, so I just signed their name and wrote one up. And you know, this is before. Look, it was long distance to call people just three blocks away. So Arizona to Seattle was expensive. They weren't calling them to ask if they had given me a smoking t a permit. Nobody was going to do that. Okay, that's what it was. We're going to do that. So um, you know, they just weren't. So anyway, that was the the, the um, adventures of you know. So I took up smoking then. So when I met, yeah, we had a place where we could go smoke too. We could go to some place called the Concho. They had a like a little uh, no no kidding. They had a, at that school. They had a, a building you could go after class because it was a boarding school. And you could go and you could. Um, um, you could smoke at the, at the back. They had a jukebox. You could dance. It was a co-educational school. Um, and that, that I was at, and I think I told you the story about how I started off as a junior, but I became a senior. I don't know if I told you that story or not. But um, you could you could smoke behind the you know you could smoke you know they actually had a place where the kids could smoke uh, legally. Well, maybe they didn't want the place burned down. Who knows? You know, it's hard to know what thinking of adults is on these kind of things, right? <laughs> but um, well, back in that time period, I mean, if you look at you know, well, they was, hadn't come out with "it's going to kill you" yet. With, right, they, that I mean, didn't happen until I was in my twenties. TV advertising on and all the movie stars smoked, and yeah. if you were anybody, and if you wanted to have a really good time, you drank Miller beer, and you um, had a cigarette, and 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 had a cigarette on a sailboat. That was what you did. <laughs> I, I, Life I was, was good. That's what you did. In fact, we all talk about the fact that I have yet to have a Miller time experience where that you know I've had some fun in my life, but those people on that boat on that commercial look like they were having more more fun. More fun than you were having. Yeah. But anyway, because that was the ad, right? If you could, you know, couldn't hook up with the Marlboro Man, um, you know, depending on what your little fantasies were, you could. Um, uh, you could imagine being on a sailboat and um, that kind of stuff. So, that being said, um, so then they came out when when uh, the before sentence was before sentence was born. Then they came out and um, said, you know, in Congress and everything, they came out in Congress and, you know, explained why smoking was a bad thing and that it was really going to be very harmful, cause cancer and all that stuff, and you should smoke. And Colby and I thought about quitting, but believe it or not, that wasn't the thing that made me want to quit. I mean, I kind of believed him, but I don't know if I did or not, but, you know, that wasn't the thing that um, made me want to quit, okay? What made me want to quit was that cigarettes went up to three dollars a carton, and we were on a limited budget. And um, so that and the fa kind of that was the that was a pretty big factor, you know, in why one might want to quit smoking. Just saying. How much did they get to? Three dollars a carton. Man. For a whole carton, and now they're like you know they're just oh, 60, 70 bucks now, aren't they? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but you know, they 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 had, and they had raised the taxes on them and everything too, trying to get people to sm stop smoking. They thought I think the thinking was if they got expensive enough, people would st stop. And even you know my niece, who's, you know, back when I don't know if she still smokes, but you know back when her budget 
was not, a, a, really could never allow for smoking. You know, she still smoked. She didn't drink or anything, but she still smoked because, you know, that's how addictive it is. I mean, people appreciate it that it's all very well to say it's nice to quit, but it's very addictive. So when Colby, you know, I, I kind of quit cold turkey and, um, and Colby was going to try to quit too. And I, I think um, Cinnamon was born then and we decided for her that um, you shouldn't be smoking parents. So anyway, Colby tried to quit and um, he got, he smoked Marlboros and um, I smoked, no, I, he smoked Palmel's which was uh, filterless Palmel's and I smoked Marlboros which had a filter for anybody that remembers what cigarettes were like in those days, right? So, um, uh, Colby, Colby and I, Cinnamon's dad and I, we got along and then we didn't. I mean, most of the time we, you know, we, what's the expression, fighting like cats and dogs? We fought a lot. Uh, it's true, we did, we, we, we fought a lot. And um, most, you know, he, he had, put, had some pretty good arguments and stuff, you know. He was a tricky, he was 10 years older than me, and he would say things like, well, I used to do that dumb shit when I was your age, but now I don't. I'm so much more superior now with how it came across, right? I don't do that, I understand that, but we don't do that. This kind of weird stuff, right? But when he was trying to quit smoking, he generally was trying to quit he decided the only reason he couldn't quit was because I was such a difficult person to live with that anybody, a sane person, would need, would need the, the help of tobacco just to get through the day. <laughs> just, My goodness. Yeah, seriously. And um, might have been true, you know, because, you know, anyway. And also, at that time, I was weaning him off of cigarettes. I'm not, or, or rather, uh, coffee, caffeinated caffeine and coffee, but he quit, quit smoking. Remember that, he, he eventually quit, but he got a big lump. He was so allergic, he got a big lump on the back of his neck from, you know, um, that, you know, because your body poisons, and once you stop, the poisons still go there, but unfortunately, you no longer have that. Um, you just don't. So anyway, the um, I think the main and the other reason I quit, besides the three dollar and fifty cents a carton, was that I may have told this part of the story was that um, we were we used to ride our motorcycles up into the hillside, up into the mountains, way above the ski hill, way up high. In fact, we'd get so high we would ride. It would be so high that um, um, you're, um, you couldn't light a match. Okay, you know, you're, the altitude, you're too high in altitude to be able to have a match light. So not enough oxygen. Not enough oxygen. So I think I told the story, but it's still kind of a telling one. But this is how steep the addiction gets. Um, when. We couldn't. We were up there at this beautiful view. Couldn't believe it. You could see all of the all of the mountains from. We were up so high. It was just fabulous. We're up so high, and you see all these mountains. And the cigarette wouldn't light. So Colby has taken the spark plug out of the one of the, the one of the Hondas. I don't know, Honda 150. Or no, two, two, a 90 maybe a Honda 90. I don't know. Remember anymore. But um, he took the, uh, the, the, the spark plug out, and I'm cranking, it, I'm cranking it over, and he's got his face in there in where the spark plug is trying to get the cigarette to light, which is crazy. I mean, this is just, that's, I thought that was, the, that was the money, and it was, the, it was that. And I said, you know, there was two elk showed up on that wonderful day, and, and really close to us, like just like 10 feet away and looking at us probably wondering what what are these stupid people doing right and um, 
Kobe, Kobe kind of missed it, and I thought, because his face was in the, you know, in the spark plug place on the motorcycle. And I thought, you know, there's something wrong with this picture. We're, we're seeing things that uh, nobody else even sees. And we're, um, we're worried about cigarettes because, you know, we only had to go down about 10 minutes down the hill and into a meadow with all the wildflowers and everything. We only had to go about, you know, 10 minutes and we would have, um, we would have been able to light, light them, you know, the lighters would have worked and the matches, okay, would have worked. So anyway, that was the story of that. So he, he, but then when he tried to quit, he was a very difficult quitter. <laughs> so we had gone to San. Cinnamon was a baby when he was quitting, and we had gone taken a road trip to San Diego. You know, San Diego has the most beautiful zoos, has the most beautiful zoo, probably in the world, and it's and it's they've got as many trees that are botanical wonders and plantings as they do. Um. Um. um anything else. I mean, they really, and it's amazing. The uh, San Diego Zoo is amazing. So we wanted to see it. You know, there's a lot of write-ups in the magazine about it. <clears throat> we wanted to go to San Diego. So we just had the baby and we were short of money, short of money. So you, John will tell you that I'm a, I'm, I'm a whiz when we're kind of short of money. What can we do, right? Wouldn't you say, John? Yeah, absolutely. What's the plan? We have, we want to do this. We have no money. How can we do it, right? But basically, yep. That's what we're talking about here. So, um, I said, let's invite your mother to go to the zoo. She's got money, and um, then she'll want to see the baby. <laughs> and well, if we can fly out. She's living in Lake Havasu City. She had got a house there, an apartment. So we can fly out to Lake Havasu City. And um, and she can, um, we'll use her car. So all we have to figure out is how much the airplane in those days wasn't much money. And um, she'll probably cover the cost of the trip just to, you know, just to be with us, okay? Because I don't think she'd seen the baby then until since the baby was born in some few months, I guess. She came down for the birth of Cinnamon. So um, anyhow, she did. She came. Um, um, she agreed to take, you know, to, to, to sponsor. She sponsored the trip. So, and she had an old she had a station wagon, you know, just a typical you know, station wagon, and we're, we're driving out to. To San Diego and uh, from Lake Havasu City it wasn't that far. I think we, I think we made it in a day to the hotel. And she. Colby and her were, were sitting in the, in the back seat. I was sitting in the back seat with the baby. And um, she was, um, and Colby would take turns driving. And every once in a while I'd say, I can drive. Because they'd spell each other, right? I, I can drive. And she'd look at me very nicely and just totally ignore the fact that I had said that, right? And I said, but wait, I can, I can drive. And this, this fell on total deaf ears, right? There was no Ginger can drive. Ginger wouldn't drive. And finally, I was getting very frustrated because, I mean, I wanted to drive too, right? And, and, and she was just totally ignoring me. And... Um, so it came out that um, I said, finally, I said, I don't understand why you won't let me drive. 
I mean, I want to, you know, I mean, I'm happy to drive. Why, why, what's the deal? And so she said, well, when you and Colby got married, when Colby and I got married, um, uh, I was living, I, I was 18, just turned 18, and I was living in Aspen, Colorado, and we had driven up to see my parents, and my parents, back then people didn't live together, that was sort of an unusual thing to do, and they weren't for it, okay, even though I was 18 and stuff, they were not for it. So they basically suggested to Colby, my dad didn't know my dad did that, they basically suggested to Colby that if he wanted to leave Seattle with me, that it would be, I would be married to him or there would be no leaving. Even though what there, I wasn't pregnant or anything like that, it wasn't even one of those stories, shotgun marriages, but it was kind of like that, okay? So um, he said, no, there's no, there's no leaving. No leave in Seattle if you're, if you're not married. So we got married, and my mother planned this huge wedding. I mean, really, invited a friend. We even had our she. We this is before the internet or anything. You got it. <laughs> my sister eloped, so she didn't get to do a wedding with her, and so she even had our name matches, our matches that you know printed with our names on them. She pulled this wedding off and in like eight days or something. I mean, it was incredible, right? And um, you wouldn't, I mean, I know that's just, I mean, that's so crazy, isn't it? She did, she pulled this wedding off that, that much. And um, so, anyhow, the, uh, so Colby, so we, of course we had to invite Colby and his sister Joanne, who was like three years younger than him, and a, um, Joanne was such a bitch, sorry. Just, just such a bitch. Anyway, at that wedding, she was coming off as being kind of nice, so I went to pick them up at the airport in Seattle at 11 o'clock at night when they flew in from Wyoming, which is where they were from. And, um, I had been, if you would imagine what it's like to plan a wedding, and that meant anything. If my mother was busy, I was busy. Um, Colby was staying in a hotel. They'd got, oh, she'd gotten them a hotel. And um, didn't matter that, you know, he had a hotel and there was a hotel. So they, um, we were, you know, trying on dresses. The only thing that helped me was like, was like a size, uh, probably a size, oh, five foot eleven, and probably a size um, nine, maybe or eight. And um, so I, I got a wedding dress, but there had to be fittings. They still had to do some stuff, and that we had to go pick out rings. And it was a very busy time. And then there was a lot of chat, chattering, and with my parents. And so when I went to pick them up. In, uh, in my mom's car, um, I was really tired. So I didn't realize that, and also I hadn't, you know, 18, I had got a driver's license in Seattle. I hadn't spent a lot of time in downtown Seattle or where the airport was or anything, right? So um, I didn't realize, you know, I really didn't want to, go out. you had to go, through, uh, there weren't freeways to the airport like there are now. You had to go through the city. It was just miles of city driving from, um, to, the, to, the, to the airport, okay? And um, so apparently, according to, to uh, Colby's mom, Betty, uh, somehow I had run every traffic light she and Joanne were sitting in the back seat. Kind of remember where Colby was. He wasn't with us when I went to pick him up. And I had run all the traffic lights going through Seattle at night. And I mean, John, John says I can be a little loose with that anyway, right? Yep. Uh, but apparently I was very loose. And she said, 
she and Joanne were sitting in the back seat hugging each other, praying that they <laughs> wouldn't kill him. <laughs> and they thought I had to be, be the worst driver that had ever lived on the planet, right? And they would never, ever get in a car with me again if I was driving. They both had kind of made a little pledge about that, right? So, you know, <laughs> what can you say, right? It, um, that's just how it was. And um, so anyway, she explained to me that that's why I was never going to drive her car, particularly her car, um, ever. And then I told her the story about how I hadn't gotten any sleep and that I was exhausted and I probably was just, I was fl flat out exhausted when I went to pick them up and she said, but we would have driven, you could have asked either one of us to drive, we would have been happy to do it, which is probably true. So we sort of, she, I didn't drive anywhere with it. She, I don't think she was still convinced. I, they still, she still drove, right? She really was not convinced, John. Can't Even though I told her this, this is what happened. Can't understand why. But uh, so I didn't get to drive. So we, but we we had a nice time at the zoo with the kid, and uh, I'm not sure we didn't make a mistake in doing that because when Cinnamon and John got married, I'm gonna throw the kid under the bus, right? They were renting a house for me out in Hockley, and they had. They had John's family dog, which his mother immediately insisted, insisted he take. Now they were married, even though he lived in their house and he was kind of old, this dog. And then um, they had a roommate named um, Ryan, that John's high school friend, that had also moved in with them. Okay, and then and he had. They had a parrot. They had a prairie dog. They had two ferrets and um, a goldfish tank. It's hard to tell. The goldfish tank was so murky you could hardly tell there was any. So apparently there was some goldfish that lived in there. But, you were um, told that anyways. They had said that, you know, there's some fish in there somewhere. Because Cinnamon's husband apparently had worked in a pet store when he was younger and had not been allowed to bring home the pets. So now that they, now they were adults, they could get all this stuff. And then, um, then they had the... Um, Um, then they had, the, then Lilu came home with a cat that uh, was a stray, a little kitten in her mouth that was starving. Lilu was their um, Australian shepherd. And anyway, so Lilu came home with that, that cat. And um, let's see, I've got to get some colors here, more paints out. And, um, then they had two other cats, and uh, let's see that. See, let's see what else did they have? They had, they had a lot of pets, and um, uh, let's see. So there was Lilu, and then they, and then they had the cat was named. They had. They had all these different cats, and then they ended up um, seeing, you know, back in, back in that time when they got married, Houston still allowed people to um, um, to sell things on the side of the road. You know, there'd, there'd be fun little uh, music house boxes and all kinds of, I mean, not music boxes, like birdhouses and, you know, crafts and flowers and firewood and whatever. People could buy stuff, okay? You could, you could buy stuff. So, um, Cinnamon had, was driving up the road and they saw there were some puppies for sale and they stopped and this family was selling these dogs and they got, maybe they were adopting or whatever. Um, and um, they ended up with Tank and, and a um, 
and a, um, a, let's see, what was the other one? A min, min, min pin? So I don't know how many dogs. They had a lot of dogs. And um, a lot. And I think that maybe if we had not done that zoo trip, that she might have, you know, I feel these kind you know, there's inf you get these influences way early on, right? <laughs> because she was enamored with the animals when we went to the zoo. How's that? But I ended up with Tank, which he was... He became a t-shirt. Yeah, he's the dog on the t-shirt with the toilet paper, right? You know, it's holding the <laughs> toilet paper. He was sort of a cross. We don't know what kind of dog he was. A motley. George called him a sooner, sooner one kind of a dog than another kind of thing, right? So, um, but Tank, so I told you these are just going to be rambling things, right? Tank was huge and uh, had a brindle coat, if you've ever seen pictures of him. I'm sure you have if you've you know, watched any of those videos. And um, one Christmas, uh, Tank came home. It was oh, George had a warehouse out by the air airport where he was making plastic stuff. He had this warehouse. And uh, Tank came home. Tank wandered in the warehouse and he had this giant honey baked ham between his paws. Seriously, he was dragging it like a lion, you know, drags prey. This giant, huge honey baked ham. But he had eaten a lot of it. And when they, one of the guys that worked for John thought maybe he could get it from the dog and kind of clean it off and save it. Um, and he'd, he'd eat it himself, but um, that was not to be. That was not, the ham was not savable. So Tank came home that, that night and he was so sick, he just laid on the floor and groaned. And, and I'm thinking, well, I mean, you think about how much salt's in a honey-baked ham, right? It's uh, not, not a big shock there if he's, if he's struggling a little bit with his digestion. Yeah. So I said, well, I said to George, I said, you know, he didn't just, that, they lived by the airport. I said, that honey-baked ham didn't fall out of a tree or an airplane. He got it from somebody that's close to you. And the only thing close to us was a home for um, uh, adults that, you know, maybe were you know, maybe artistic or, you know, a little bit uh, challenged in one way or another. Um, and he ne you never saw them, but they was in the house, but that's where we lived next door, in this old house next to their warehouse, which is about the size of Home Depot, his warehouse. So anyway, I said, you know, you ought to f figure out who he took that ha ham. Where did he get that that um, that ham? That those are expensive, you know, right? I mean, they just are. You guys know that, right? That honey baked hams are. They take honey and they take a blowtorch and they sear it into the ham and they want big bucks for that. If you get it around Christmas time, honey baked hams are a lot a lot of money. So, um, anyhow, so the next day, George comes back from the warehouse, and he says to me, you want the good news or the bad news? And I said, well, let's just have the news. What's going on? He said, well, he'd gone over to the place next door, the, the little home next door in the backyard, and he said there were two barbecues tipped over and he said, um, there was a, yes, he got the, he said he not only got the ham, but he ate a whole turkey first. Well, you gotta have turkey with your ham. He, had, he ate the whole turkey first, which is kind of funny in itself, right? So I said, well, I guess you owe those people 
a turkey and a ham, don't you? So anyway, that, that happened that Christmas. It's kind of, these are the kind of things that, you know, you just, you know, can't believe stuff like that, right? That the dog would do that. And he was a big kind of junkyard dog. But he, he recovered, he finally recovered. And uh, which was good. All right, we have a little break in the action. I'm going to remind people what we're doing here, in case you stumbled across us. We were doing what we call fly on the wall story times. These are basically commissioned pieces that are being painted by Ginger for the promo that we were having, or are having, on our yearly memberships up through the end of December. I'm putting into the chat the details on it, so you can see what's going on. You sign up for one year as a red or purple member, you will get a painting. And six by eight for red and eight by ten for purples. And then if you do multiple years, you can see the breakdown there. Up to a three year, we'll get you a 12 by 16 original painting, non tutorial, won't be taught painting. Currently, we have approximately 70 of them to do. They will be going out after the first of the year. Basically, as they get done, it may take us the entire year to get them all done. Because we still have to do our regular tutorial lessons and YouTube lessons. So, Well, besides that, I'm not just going to rush and paint junk. I'm no, doing a really don't. nice job on this, John. That's the other thing. We will not put out junk. Because these we, have we, a value to them. So... If you want to take advantage of that, even if you're a current member monthly or yearly and your renewal is not till later, we can certainly dovetail it in there and convert a monthly over to yearly. Just use the contact us and Liz or I will take care of you. Okay, Liz will take care of you. Let's not beat around the bush. So that's, uh, and that ends on the 31st of December at 11.59 p.m., and the Queen will be happy. And we're never doing this again. <laughs> no, this will never, ever be repeated again. Yes, I had we no did idea. not think we would have this many jump in And on I'm this. not complaining. I'm happy no. to do it for you oh, guys. Absolutely. And I don't want everybody to, I want any, no, nobody to feel left out because I'd be happy to do it. So just yeah. so you know what we're doing. This is one of the more intricate, detailed ones we're doing this, this afternoon. Yeah, this is, probably, this is probably our last, unless someone signs up for three years, it's probably our last. Oh, no, you've got, we have at least another 12 by 16, I think. Okay. Liz and I were this going is, through them. Yeah? We've got to get them up to date. I think we have one more 12 by 16. But we have some other ones in mind for that size that we're going to use. So we, we've got plenty designed. We're, we're ready to do them. We just have to dovetail them in with our regular work schedule. Unless somebody can come up with more than 24 hours in a day. Yeah. We haven't been able to do that. As much as I've tried. says I'm already loving this one. I love your more detailed paintings. They take forever. Well, they're hard so ones you, to teach. You guys would I give up on them. I have two other academy lessons that are based on this theme. That are going to be that I will be doing for the academy. Yeah. That are based on this theme because I liked it so much. Just so, you know, don't want anybody to think that. So hang in there. Something similar. Something similar. Not the same. and Certainly a different painting, but. Oh, yeah. Um, different view. You know, different stuff. And But, you know, the same neighborhood. How's that? No, I think it's down the street. Same time period anyway. Yeah, same time period. For those of you who don't know, we are having a live show after Cinnamon on Christmas Day. Cinnamon's supposed to go at 1 p.m. 
And hers were usually two, two and a half hours. So that means we'll go at three, three thirty. And I believe that would be her time, so our time would be two, two thirty. Because she's in the Eastern time zone now. And when the queen wants to take a break and let things dry, we have some Christmas cards and gifties to open. Oh yeah, we should. Let me just to mention that too. Because I know you're having so much fun over there. Sometimes she gets in the zone where we're painting and she just totally forgets about the time. I have to remind her, you need to stand, you need to go eat, you need to move around. <coughs> yeah. She just disappears for hours on end. Yeah, because it's th that easy to do, right? Yep. It is that easy to do, just kind of. Just get in your zone. Yeah, this is this is you know really probably the most detailed one. But I, but you know when I when I saw the idea of it, I thought you know what, this would be fun to fun to see come to fruition. You like that fruition? Yeah. Bring it to life. Yeah. Absolutely. I miss so much. Can someone tell me if John and Cinema moved to Ireland yet? No, they 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 uh, they next Ireland. They moved to uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is so close to Ireland. Um, they they were not able to get the paperwork done in time, and the kids had to go to school, and it just became a problem. They have it now. They could have done it now, but they're not going now. Kids are well ingrained in the school. The John yeah. and Cinema are getting involved with the kids in school. So yeah, so they just they have the they they're can they Michigan. can. But they could, for instance, go over in the summer, some summer, and, and legally do business in Ireland because they've got all the correct paperwork, not just a tourist visa. So technically they could do that. Um, all right, I'm gonna let this, if we have some, we'll just take a break for a minute. And um, you said we have some gifts and story time, to, gifts to open? We have stuff. You don't want to save that for Christmas? Well, no, because that, that could be, a, no. Okay. No, you always open up Christmas cards before. Well, yeah, because you got to put them up, right? Yeah. These so need to be open. All right. So let me just get a tub of towels on my hands here and uh, clean those. Uh, we do not sell these. We do not have these in our Amazon store. Well, we may have them in our Amazon store, but we, we probably ought to, we don't. But um, some years ago, we t we found these and liked them. Tub and Towel sent us like about two cases of them, so I still use them. But nothing takes your paint off your hands like these things, and they're not environmentally friendly and all this good stuff. Blah 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 blah. Blah blah. But they do work. And my best thing was one of our one of our members, of Academy members. If you guys know what a white Chanel bedspread is, that's that cotton with all the little bumps on it and patterns, but it's white. And uh, she spilled some red, sat on a red paint tube and it broke and red, red paint all over her bedspread and the tub of towels got out the paint. I would have not given that a prayer because I would have thought the paint would have soaked in and that would have been just all she wrote with that. You would have then been painting some sort of, in pink. painting that uh, bedspread somehow. Um, but anyhow, nope, we came out. These are just the marvelous, by the way. By the way. So. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that sent in. Oh, I remember <laughs> I said that I didn't see any Christmas cards. <laughs> thank you for responding. So thank you. This is from Bradshaw in Canada. Look at that. Oh, you guys, look at the cute little stamp with the little mountain and everything. Do you remember when... Well, so John opened them. So yeah, they've all been sliced. I've not opened them. So uh, wishing you a very Christmas. Oh, nice That's painting. That's one of our painting tutorials, and she put it for the card. Isn't that gorgeous? That is gorgeous. 
And um, then she's from Paulette Bradshaw. And hope you have a fabulous holiday season. Thank you so much for sharing all your artistic talents on YouTube and your Art Academy. Just sitting and painting with you brings me so much joy and peace that I can devote special time for myself. Paulette Bradshaw, isn't that lovely? And sending peace, love, and joy to you and your family. So that is wonderful. I love the plaid, don't you? That is just great. What, so this what, is, if you're wondering what the tutorial is for this, this is Sparkle Santa. On, what, what's uh, Sparkle, the name of, Sparkle Santa. What is the name of the person? Uh, Bradshaw, Bradshaw. Paulette Bradshaw. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Paulette. So let's see. Just put them up on the... Uh, yeah, like this, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put this one over here. You just put them off on the side as you go through. Yeah, and then this one's from Cleveland, Ohio. Ooh, there is a Cleveland. And there's a little snowman. Let's take some joy in all this, right? Because <laughs> of the, you know, because I literally begged for everybody for Christmas, shamelessly begged y'all for Christmas cards, <laughs> and I am not the least, yeah. Oh, and y'all came through. There's one of her paintings. Look at oh, that. I like that LB, one. that's so cute. And she says, wishing you and... Ginger and John, wishing you a happy, healthy year. This is from my second year of painting. I'm all about the next year and this one, but I wanted to send you a Christmas greeting. Cheers, Lori ba Baylor in Ohio. And then here's her, look at, there's her hand-painted uh, barn and card, too. So we have, and then she did both of these. Look at that. Oh, I like that one, too. And this is interesting because this is an insert where she put the uh, the picture. See that? It's an interesting card. Thank well, and it kind of frames it. It comes with a frame. You see, you just oh, put those the clips in there. That's kind of a cool well, card. Well, we think, Lori, that's cool. And I bet um, our viewing audience, if you're watching, probably would like to know where you would find it on a blank card like this where you could put pictures in. Inquiring minds want to know. I know people want to know that, right? Because they're inquiring. So this is from uh, Mary uh, Tellerco, and she lives in New York. And look, she, of course she has a hockey player um, <laughs> and American flag, right? Of course she does. So if it's not too late to send us cards. Our, our address is 21175 State Highway 249. Oh, it's right here so you can read it, right? Unit 330, Houston, Texas, 77070. So if you, you know, it's not too late. We'll take them after Christmas. We love hearing from you. So, oh my gosh. Oh, I love that one. Look at this. This is, one, again, one of our um, tutorials. Tutorials. Here's the Santa. Um, every year I've tried to do a Santa, and oh, look, at she, it sparkles. She put glitter on this one. That had to be after the fact. Mary, you're darn clever. You done clever. You you, you be clever, <laughs> darling. And um, what was the name of this tutorial? Do you remember? So, uh, I'm no. So Merry Christmas and you Happy New Year. Samuel, May the coming year bring health and happiness and peace. Love Mary and Pete. Well, and Shutterfly did this for her. Um, oh, Shutterfly printed. Shutterfly that. printed that for her. And isn't that just Mary? You rock. That's interesting. You rock. I didn't know Shutterfly did that. Well, you oh, see, yeah, we're Shutterfly learning things that. today, right? Now, this is from Kathy Berry from Villa Rica, Georgia, okay? And I don't know she's got is. a snowman with a snow globe. And it's um, uh, Atlantis, Atlanta. So that's the, stamp, that's the postage stamp that's being done that way. Yeah, postage stamp. Well, that's kind of Depending on where you stuff. live, right? Oh my gosh, there is the YouTube tutorial we did with the ho candles and holly. There's still time to paint that. And there is her uh, card that she did. You got to know that this makes me cry. This is so nice that you guys are not sent them, but that you, that you're doing the art and you're so successful. And this is fabulous. So she writes, thank you for all the inspiration and encouragement over the years. May the light you bring to others all year through shine brightly on you both for Christmas and throughout the year to come. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Most sincerely, Kathy Berry. And these are stunning, you guys. So see? Okay, this was a great idea, John. Um, Wanda Spratt, and she lives in North Houston, Fresno, Texas. It got stamped here. And again, we have a, um, a little Santa and a snow globe. 
this is a private, this is a thought here that, that many, I told you to be a thing of random thoughts. My random thought is that you know that the only, it's, you can't, you know how you get your artwork on a stamp is that every year there's a duck contest for adults and for children. If any of you are homeschooling, look that up on the .gov a stamp contest for the United States. If you if your if your painting is chosen, it becomes a stamp. It will become a stamp, and they'll tell you the winners for ten years back because they want different kinds of American ducks. Well, there's no such thing as American ducks. They start in Canada and they come down, so it's kind of <laughs> insulting Canadians. They call them American ducks. But anyway, oh, they... so 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 we're stealing the Canadian ducks. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. probably not nice of us. Oh, look at this. Well, those guys are cute. And and she's painted and Wanda did this in 2003. And here's her little now, who, gnome, uh, who, who, Wanda Sprat, gnome, oh, Santa, Wanda. gnome Santas. Again, she's got one of these Christmas cards where you where can do he, the insert. Look at flip it over for a second. Is there a stamp on the back or no? No, no. it's just um, happy oh. holidays and best wishes, New Year. Best wishes to you and John in this holiday season. Love following you travels and painting adventures. Please enjoy my new adventure into drawing and watercolor with these happy, mischievous gnomes back to acrylics as the new year dawns. Ha, that's happy art drugs, ha. Wanda, thank you, Ginger and John, for your great tutorials and support. So look at that. How cute is this? That is adorable. Yes and yes, you guys. All right, thank you, Wanda. We're going to have to get a bigger fire man man for all our cards. And this is from Stephanie Bowman in Orange, Virginia. And again, apparently that she has a Santa too, Richmond, Virginia. Oh, how cute. Oh, what fun. <laughs> and she says, I had so much fun painting with you and listening to your stories. Thank you so much, Stephanie B. So thank you, Stephanie, for sending this beautiful card. And we appreciate it very much. And it just makes Christmas so happy when you do that. So this one is from Kay Phillips from Luxembourg, Virginia, Greensboro area. And how do you know it's a Greensboro area? Because it says up here, Greensboro, <laughs> North Carolina. Okay. I just wondered how, boy, you're very clever with all this stuff. I am clever, but <laughs> also, I'm, this is so true, John, I am clever. Yes, you are. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cute? And she signed this. You like that? That's and cute. look at that, that's adorable. And she says, Ginger and John, may the gifts of joy and peace be yours this Christmas season throughout the year, Kay Phillips. Well, actually, Lisa signed it, but Kay sent it. So December 12th. This is gorgeous. Thank you so much. And wait, there's more. There's more. This yeah. is from Mary Slag from Rap Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's the old right? stomping grounds. Yeah, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Do you have Grand Rapids there? Why is that name there? Do you have like a river with lots of rapids? Uh, yeah. Well, not really rapids. They're, <laughs> they're flowing through there now. All right. And she writes, uh, Merry Christmas. She's got a beautiful poinsettia. Merry Slag. I have been watching your paint and listening to your stories. Um, Von Dur, a great... John does a great job keeping your show... Operating efficiently. Love you both. Wishing you a very messy Christmas. Mary Slag. So thank you very much, Mary. And she painted this, by the way. Mary Slag. There, there it is. So you see, things. Let's see. Went back, back in. You get to stay up there. Okay. These are so fun. I'm telling you what. I, you have made my Christmas, you guys. So ooh, Merry Christmas from Steffi's Art Studio. And she sent, uh, these are Steffi's paintings, Summer Bliss. And here's the, their note cards. This is lovely, Steffi. And uh, uh, Steffi Bowman, a native West Virginian, spent much of her childhood falling in love with the trees. And so on. she has her whole, um, um, her bio back here. And she has these beautiful uh, greeting cards. Uh, note cards that you can say. So thank you. These are wonderful. And then she, um, here's some um, little sketches she's done with some envelopes so you can send those. And uh, 
America, the Fredericksburg, Virginia. These are, fan, that's, th these are lovely. So these are what a wonderful gift, Steffi. Thank you. And um, now let's put these up here, and then let's see. She's got a nice note. I like to call myself Els and change to Steffi. Contact info. I call. I like to call myself Elise, but and change to Steffi. Contact information is no good now. <laughs> well, John, I guess this is more of that, but. Um, uh, well, we'll read, we'll read your note, Steffi. Thank you very much for that. And um, that's great. And that's a nice way to send things, too, isn't it? And look, she's got her own sticker, Steffi Art Studio. So, Steffi, if you're watching, you might tell people how you got that sticker, where, where you got that made, right, John? Yes. Okay. So, wait, wait, there's more cards. I guess this is kind of our show today, right? That just, but I, so, the, you guys sent the cards, right? So... We so appreciate it. You asked. I want a Christmas card. You I were did. begging. But the only card I was getting was from my insurance salesman <laughs> for Medicare. Oh, my gosh. Here is another one of our paintings. This is Santa with the lantern. And, there's no, and this is from Mona Edgar yeah. from North Carolina. And look at this. That's, again, one of our tutorials, Santa with the lantern. And she says, Ginger and... John, wishing you the world and peace to your heart's Chris, heart this Christmas. Uh, Mona Edgars. So Mona, this is gorgeous. Thank you so much. Look at that, you guys. All right, we're getting there. Now, this is fun. I'm sorry. Just, you know you wanted me to see a paint, but this is, <laughs> you know, this is what we're doing. And dashing through the snow. This is cute. Look at the little bears. Can't go wrong with bears. And oh my gosh, John, a Christmas, Christmas funds to John Little from Debbie Torrier. Oh. So this is actually her membership check. Yeah. She pays monthly. So I will. She, well, quarterly. She pays quarterly. So we'll yeah. put that up here for John. Give that to the and accounting then, department. Yeah, uh, accounting department. Dearest Ginger and John, you wished a lot of happiness and season to come and get Merry Christmas. Always Deborah Tory. So that is lovely. And thank you very much for being an Academy member. And, you know, Debbie pays quarterly. And we appreciate that very much. And she get a little break for paying quarterly? Yeah, she does. She gets a little break for paying quarterly. Um, that, that, it, that's a contact us kind of thing. So this is coming from, okay. This is coming from the Car Caraway Sterling, 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 Virginia. Ooh, she paid, paid some postage to get it. There's a gift. Look at this. Wait, wait, wait. There's a gift. Oh. It looks like a little magnet. It's like a little magnet for the fridge. Oh, it is. Look at that, what she painted. Look at that, you guys. I'm sorry our Zoom doesn't work anymore. Because that is so cute. Focus. Focus. There. Can you? Pretty cool. Can you open that for me? Just got to open that really quick with that. That that is adorable. And what detail? Someone asked me why I didn't do the AOC th things like this and little things like that. I can't paint that small. <laughs> I really, honestly, I can't. I, go I on can't. The fridge. That goes on Rita. The, uh, all right. That's now, the end of the fridge. And this is from her. She says, "Happy holidays, Ginger and John. I decided to try this again. A beefier envelope. So I hope you get the magnet this time. We did. Oh, and we did. Here you got." The card, but not the gift, reminded me of a, when I had the kids help me stuff and address holiday cards several <laughs> years ago. One of my friends called me to say thank you so much for thinking of me, but the envelope was empty. <laughs> and, oh, kids, we mailed at least uh, at least six empty envelopes that year. Hope you enjoy the holidays, Lisa Caraway. So that's a great story. You see, there's story time everywhere, right? You just never know where the stories are coming from. I remember what, when I was a kid, my mom and I would, uh, well, teenagers, when I, well, when I was a kid too, but we'd sit over in her room. My dad was a judge, and so everybody, we had hundreds of Christmas cards come. And, you know, people were trying to, you know, get favor, I guess, because um, uh, the, the real expensive, fancy ones and, you know, all that stuff. And, and my mother would put them all up on the mantle. We had Christmas cards everywhere. And then what she did was she would... Um, cut out the picture and use them for to and from 
for gift cards for the yeah, next year on gifts. Yeah, my parents did that too. Did your parents do oh, that? Oh yeah, that must have been in the in the book. <laughs> Somebody must have said to do that because you know that's what it's she in did. In the book with somewhere. It. But besides that, she made uh, really good Christmas cookies, and then we weren't couldn't have them. Okay, so here's the last. Here's here's the I think this is the last one here. Um, ooh, this is one of the YouTube tutorial. You guys remember this? Merry Christmas, the bar, this old barn, that's on YouTube. Um, dear Ginger and John, uh, Jack and I are wishing you the best holiday this season. And close is, is the painting I posted in the club for the Gnome Challenge. I tried to make it somewhat cartoon corny and at the same time capture a rough likeness of a gnome. I hope you guys Love get you. a chuckle out of it as I did with love, A and G, and then Art and Jack. Art, Art, this is from Art Thomas and Jack, Jackie. Jackie, all right? That's so, so you guys, hold your breath, but drum roll, please. <laughs> drum roll, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, drum roll. Right, whoops, whoops. Yeah, drum roll. Oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one in the contest. I remember that's that funny. in the contest. How fun is that? So, uh, a, a takeoff on, uh, on John and I when um, we did a, a funny video and pretended to be the couple in that painting. So, thank you, Art. Thank you, Art, so much. We will okay. treasure all of these. Oh, you got one more to go. Oh, yeah, we got one more. Okay. This is great. And, you know, excuse me while I scoop these up before something happens. This is from uh, Sandra Perez. And she, oh, she's in Japan She's now. in Japan. Yes. Now, that is something, Sandra, to get me a card all the way from Japan. What kind of stamp has it had? Look at this, you guys. We want to see the stamp. Oh, it says Tokyo, Nippon, and it's got a blue stamp with some yellow flowers on it. That's cute. And it says Airmail. And then it says uh, Merry Christmas, Ginger John, wish you Merry Christmas and a pro and a prosperous 2024 art hugs, um, Sandy Perez. So you guys, thank you so much for all these beautiful cards. They will go on the mantle. Oh, here's one more. No, it's the same one. You opened it backwards. Oh. <laughs> it's just fine. She wrote on it backwards. She wrote on it backwards. <laughs> I, oh, I thought this was the card, right? I don't know. The other side looks more but, fancy. But this is it, right? Here it is. With cookies. Uh, with cookies and everything. So sorry. Cookies. That's hilarious. You know, I'm thinking, well, it's <laughs> <laughs> a card. Okay. All Yay. Right. That was lovely. Thank you. Back to work. Back to work. All we'll right. have presents later. We have three three boxes. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. Maybe we'll do those we'll tomorrow. See. All right. All right. No worries, let's, you guys. Let's We're, get back to work. Yeah. The, the, you guys, thank you so much because we really... Christmas cards make me extremely happy. And uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, um, and also, you know, it's just a, it's a lovely thing to do. So th thank you so much for that. Um, Did you get where you were now? No, I just, life goes on, right? I know where <laughs> I am, sort of. Okay, here we're back. So, uh, don't forget to put your board under there, unless you're staying at the top there, you're fine if you're staying at the top. I'm staying up here. Okay. So, um, let's see, I need my, need I like my that mixing magnet. board, right? Rita will enjoy that. So in case anyone's wondering where this is, should I tell you or just let you be surprised? Just guess as we go. Oh, I guess as we go, because you can't really tell until you get down towards the end, down towards the bottom of it. They don't need to know. You don't need to know, John says. Gosh, so sorry. Just don't need to know. Don't need to know. What was it your mother used to say? Uh, little ears have big pictures. Pictures? Pictures? Did, remember that? The what? Little ears have big pictures. Little ears have big pictures? Didn't they say that? Wasn't no. that the saying? What was it? Little ears have what then? I have no idea, little ears. Come on, you guys. What did they say? Because I thought that little was... Little ears have big pictures? No. You can find the photo insert cards with envelopes on Amazon. Oh, you guys. Good to know, right? Well, I need to look those up. Little, little picture have big ears. 
That's what Cheryl says. Little pitchers have big ears, right? No, little ears have big pitchers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was something like that. Come on, you guys. It was something like that, wasn't it? Uh, did we get a card from Cheryl? Not yet. That means the kids are picking up on everything. Yeah. Which they do. Oh, they don't miss a trick. No, that was all the cards we've gotten as of today. I don't remember a Cheryl in there. This was good. That gave this painting a chance to absorb all this paint and dry. So thank you very much for letting us open cards. But, you know, it's kind of fun. It's the holidays. So... See, we were back to telling tales about the kids and school and smoking and Let's see what else. Um, Cinnamon's dad liked to, you know, was a hand glide. He, when hang, people started to, the hand gliders came out when Cinnamon was about five. It just was a hand, you know, people were, someone had came up, some guys in Kansas were the first ones to build hand gliders. And then there were some guys in California and it was a big thing. And that was the, um, uh, this camp, you know, learning how, you know, hand gliders. And Cinnamon's dad was fascinated by the idea of hand gliders. But before I tell that, I should finish our trip to San Diego. Besides not letting me drive the car, his mother was so fear. I could just you know how you feel when someone's mad at you. When I first met Colby, when I was 18 and he was 27, and he lied through his teeth about everything. And you know, not people in my well, of course, people in my family did that too. Otherwise, we would have had—I would have known about the dead cats. But still, um, <laughs> it was a little discus. Got you know, basically, it was. But the word is, it could grew, and I totally believed everything he said. I just believed it, right? So, um, I just got to dry that one little spot right there because I got to change the color. Spot, right there, right oh, there. Okay. Just take a second, guys. Yeah, go ahead. Groceries are about to be delivered anyways. Are they? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Cinnamon's dad, Colby, was born in um, Rollins, Wyoming. And his parents had a, sh his dad had a sheep company. And um, they had a, they, they lived in Rollins, but they had a sheep ranch outside of town. And they would go out there in the wintertime and it was, you know, and, um, uh, they, they, you know, kept the sheep 
in, in Wyoming all winter. And then in the summertime, they actually drove the sheep, like on horseback and stuff, um, to Colorado for the summer. So, um, and so anyway, that was a, so I mean, and that part was true, you know, that was true, that's what they did. So Colby uh, told me that, um, that he owned his own airplane when he was a kid. He was the youngest kid in, I don't know, Wyoming or that area or something to get a driver's license or not a driver's license, but an, uh, a pilot's license. And he would fly out to the ranch in his airplane. And he th had some great stories about that, that's flying his airplane. And, um, and he told me all this stuff about that, his airplane trip. And there was some other stuff. And he also told me that, um, that uh, you know he you know he he spent some time when I knew him he he spent some time and and you know he got drafted into the army, and he spent some time in in France and um, he had done uh, you know uh, you know he spent some time in the in the military, and um, this was before Vietnam, and you know he talked about that and he said that. Um, when he got out of the military, when he officially retired, he got a job as a partial uh, courier, like um, to deliver messages, kind of like a spy kind of thing, right? And top all talk, secret, secret stuff. And, you know, I don't know if in the military any of this stuff, you know, what do I know, right? But he said all that stuff, and I totally believed him. And so he had, he had these fantastical tales that he talked about, and some were true, and some, mostly of them weren't. So um, I remember sitting in the car with his mother, with Cinnamon's baby, and um, saying, wasn't it, well, you know, how did you like it when Colby had his airplane? Weren't you worried about him flying and all this stuff? And of course, he never had an airplane, and none of that was true. And his mother was getting mad, at, she was mad at me. Now this was what, this was just, this is a mom for you, right? She was mad at me, go figure, for Worth. making her son out to be a liar. And, you know, you and did that? Th thinking that I knew he was lying and was trying to throw him under the bus or something. And I had no idea he was lying. I really thought there was an airplane and that him and his sister, you know, did it. And I mean, absolutely thought that. I mean, I don't know where she got off, but she thought I was, she thought I was lying. And that, um, um, so she was furious at me, but she wasn't saying anything. But you know how you can tell when people, you are not somebody's favorite. You know what I mean? You just get, you, you don't have to, you don't have to follow up a turnip truck to understand that, right? You just know this was, I mean, that was, uh, uh, that was, that was the trip, and so that whole trip, that trip to San Diego, which I thought would had been so fun, really kind of wasn't. But then his mother and I finally came into an understanding when I finally confronted her about, well, why, what have I done that's, you know, because obviously you're mad about something, and besides the fact that I'm not driving your car, what is the deal here? And she just said she couldn't believe I would make all, all that stuff up that Colby said. I said, trust me, he said it. I, I, I thought, I totally believed it, you know. He had me convinced, you know. Absolutely believed it. So that was kind of weird because, uh, you know, up until that point, I had thought he did have all that airplane and he had all that stuff and he had done all that stuff. And, you know, there was always stuff that he was doing and sometimes he just, he would, he would, um, him and his friend, he had a friend that, uh, that they came back every winter and they stayed in the same, Colby had an Airstream travel trailer and they stayed in, him and Fred stayed in the same travel park. Fred was a, was a painter out of Chicago and um, he just got, took unemployment in the winter and then he went to Aspen and lived off his unemployment and skied, okay? 
which is a good gig if you can get it. Yeah. So anyhow, um, um, Colby had us uh, had me totally convinced he could do all this stuff. I totally believed him, and I believed him about the house too, even though he didn't know anything about building. And um, we had a fireplace that. Um, you know, never quite worked right. We had a lot of stuff that never quite worked right, but you know, some of the stuff he did work was like genius. He was a, really sort of a mad genius on an awful lot of stuff, and that's just why he got away with all the lies, because a lot of stuff he was absolutely, totally smart on and clever, and he really was very smart. He just um, couldn't seem to just be happy with the fact he was smart. He always had to embellish his stories a little bit. I promise you, I am not embellishing anything here. This is the what what happened. Um, in uh, uh, when we were um, together, because that's kind of what he did. And. So we have to, but I'm starting to, what was the other thing I was talking about, John? I lost John. Oh, maybe John went to get the groceries. No, I, mean, I haven't left yet. Huh? <laughs> I haven't left yet. Okay. Getting ready to, though. Okay. Well, no, you, you, you've been rambling today, so. It's been a rambling, you know? It's a rambling, what, what do we call this? Rambling something. It was a good title. Yeah, definitely rambling. Definitely rambling. Okay, now go down and take care of those. Keep track of where you are in the picture frame. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh. Keep talking to the gang once in a while. So in, um, oh, I'm using the wrong brush for this. I need a fur brush. That's what I need. I need a fur brush. I like these fur brushes from England. sort of figuring out, I'm just kind of thinking what, what happens next with this. So I'm kind of t focusing on the holidays, I guess, a little bit. Um, the, um, the year I was in Switzerland, my parents, in memory, I told you we went to Tormelinas for Thanksgiving, but my mother, um, uh, we, we went down to, uh, or rather Mallorca for Thanksgiving. We went to Torremolinas for Christmas, and I came, and I had a month off at Christmas with them. And so we, um, and that was a lovely trip because we, uh, it's a very nice uh, place, and um, we had a nice hotel, and they would bring. Every morning, uh, you know, when you got outside the door, there were handmade croissants. You could have just snack in your room. You had a little croissant breakfast, which was pretty neat, too. And um, 
So I mean, I, I quite like the experience of being in Spain and all of that, okay? That was great. Um, and, and really enjoyed it. But the problem was that so with, 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 with Spain was that my parents felt very badly that uh, there was nobody my age to hang out with. So they had, I think I may have told you that they had, you know, my mother was, you know, beach combing and she, and she found, uh, she met some young Spaniard guys that were in college and she, she lied about my age so that I'd have someone to hang out with, seriously. And later, one of them, she helped one of them, get, get, my dad helped one of them get a job in, um, uh, in America in the hotel industry, uh, which was very, you know, very nice. I, they, they were some, they, those boys made some good connections. They really did, um, in spite of the fact that um, um, the, um, I just get that kind of bushy stuff in there that we had kind of a rocky beginning with them lying about my about my age because at one point one of the boys Carlos that uh, that I started to date there at 15 he was I don't know how old 20 something like that we met his parents and his sister and the family and they came to not Christmas dinner, but New Year's dinner with them. They all came to the hotel with my parents invited them. And um, uh, that then his father took my father uh, in a private conversation and said that um, his son wanted to marry me. And my Dad said that he didn't think that um, I was uh, anywhere near ready for marriage, and you know, tried to just kind of pass it off like that. But the problem was is that um, uh, he had told them that I was 18. So then my dad, who's the judge, and again we're talking about liars here, right? And he normally didn't lie. He wasn't really particularly a, well, as far as I know. I think my mother was the one that lied, but he came, two of them cooked this up to tell them I was 18 so that they, I'd have, we'd have some fun, fun at, um, um, you know, on, 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 uh, you know, on our trip. So anyway, he, like I say, he told them I was 18 and um, so he had to tell them that I wasn't. And his dad was the, Carlos's dad was a top general in, in the army, in the military for Spain. They were well off. They were, their daughter, who was 18, was not allowed to leave the house unescorted to the fact that, that I was at 18 an American, which they considered extremely wild that I was allowed to, and guess what, you guys, it was wild. I was allowed to leave the house and go out clubbing with those boys at... Um, 11 o'clock at night, and nobody said boo, okay? So, yeah, you gotta, when you think about stuff like that, you know, you're thinking, wow, that's, that's different, right? So anyway, my dad had to sit down and tell him that, um, well, Ginger isn't quite that old, he said. Well, how old is she? You know, she said she got seventeen, and he goes no. And then, when then, well, what about? Um, I mean, it was kind of like a stair stepping down kind of thing. Well, what about? What about sixteen? Um, he goes no, because I wasn't going to be sixteen till that that February. So when his dad found out that I was sixteen, he was shocked. I mean really shocked and honestly I think with good reason you know he, he was he was really 
it couldn't be. Well, it, you know, you can imagine, right? So anyhow, the, um, to me what was, uh, I, I didn't find that out, I guess. It, so then Carlos and I didn't date anymore because his parents, his dad refused to um, let him see me, you know, let me date him. And uh, which I understand, you know, he, he was a responsible parent, right? So years later, uh, Carlos comes to America with his uh, friends, one of his friends, and um, I'm probably about 35 now, and he came to find me. And he stops by the judges in my mom's place in Seattle because he got the information because one of his high school friends, you know, um, you know, worked worked there. And um, and he wanted to know where I lived. And uh, my mother wouldn't tell. Me. She says Ginger's married, and um, you'll just cause trouble. And I'm not going to give you her your address. So I must have made some impression on this kid. Um, it wouldn't have mattered. I didn't like him at the time. I mean, I, I really liked his friend, not him at all. Though he's nice, but um, um, I mean, I, I didn't. The feelings were never reciprocated. He wasn't like some long lost love or something like that, right? Anyway, that was so weird. I mean, you know, all this time later, he comes to the states to look me up which I thought was sort of sweet. I would have been fun to see him, you know. Uh, but, what, you know, other than that, no. But. but his friend that my dad got him the original job with his cousin, I think, with the Hilton Hotels, became an executive for Hilton, for the hotel, and uh, did very well for himself. A little more complicated paint. You know, when you look at something, you get so excited, I can't wait to paint this, and then you don't realize that how complicated it actually is. But that's all right. I don't mind. It's interesting. It's an interesting, um, interesting endeavor painting this. And there's, you know, I don't know, probably take a few days to do it, particularly since we're opening Christmas cards. But you guys, that was so nice to of everyone to send in Christmas cards. And so I thank you very much for that. Yeah, when Christmas came around, uh, my parents started the tradition of sending $10 to each of the kids, or five kids, and then the grandchildren. There were a lot of those. Um, every, every, you know, every year, 10 bucks. And as the years went by, $10 really became, um, sent $10 and she sent me something, some cheese from Figgies, though I never ate cheese, which was interesting as to why she would do that. But anyway, she did. And she never, she hated Cinnamon's name. So she wouldn't um, 
send anything to Cinnamon that was, what, what she did was she sent something to Cynthia. Did you get all the groceries in there, darling? Yes, my dear. See, this is like sliced bread. Anybody miss me? How about everybody missed you? Oh, we got a $2 donation from Angela Maxwell. Thanks, Angela. Thanks, Angela. Thank you very much. That's appreciated very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so Cinnamon wouldn't cash the check because uh, her mother always sent her a check in the name of Cynthia. She didn't like, she would refuse to call her Cinnamon. So she, instead she called her Cynthia. And Cinnamon, but it's, you know, when she was little, I just cashed the checks and you know, they put them in the bank. Nobody cared, right? But when Cinnamon got old enough to realize that um, Cynthia was her and that the money was for her, she didn't want to cash the checks. She had her own checking account by then, and she did not want to cash checks for Cynthia. She was extremely offended by the fact that um, uh, my mom, you know, sent a check f to this unrecognizable person named Cynthia. She didn't like the name. And then I was always surprised, and, you know, and it was so funny because uh, now that I'm an old, now that I'm older, I kind of get it. Yet the problem is that $10 still is a lot of money. It isn't now. In compared to what it was when we were like younger, $100. it isn't. You know, I'm still back into um, into the you know, into the fifties and the you know and the sixties when some you know on how much stuff costs. And I think that's the hard part when you're when you get older is that you. Um, Is that it's it's hard to, to to really evaluate what something is. Yeah, would that be a good way to say it, John? Yes. It just is because you're so. Um, you know, so, so I'm, and it's uh, I'm I'm a lot. You know, it's just I always just thought they were just kind of cheap. Well, they were kind of cheap, but you know, that's a lot of kids too. And um, I remember one year I confronted her about something to do with birthdays and Christmas and stuff like that, and, you know, because she, um, she, she never said, you know, she never acknowledged my birthday, but boy, we had to acknowledge hers. <coughs> and I remember confronting her about it. <coughs> she said, <coughs> I remember saying, that I don't even know when your birthday is. I'm thinking, well, there you go. <laughs> Isn't that funny how does certain conversations stick out in your mind? You know, there's the ones that, you know, conversations and you, the ones you kind of remember. And that was one of those where I don't even know when your birthday is. But we were supposed to know hers and send something. Very confusing with all these boards, but um, so this is kind of rambling chat. There's the stories are just randomly rambling. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. Randomly randing, ram, ram, randomly randing the, the chat. So I bet people know where we are now, don't we, John? Absolutely. They know, know what this is now? <coughs> you think? I think so. <coughs> wow. 
And I'm getting kind of roughed in. At least I haven't lost the house and the car and everything at the little store. I didn't want to lose that. Um, Let me make sure I didn't do that. Just had this all drawn in here, so I'm just roughly. I'll come back in later with the details, but right now my my goal is to just get some blocking. Just sort of block in this. Um, That's all I'm doing now is just blocking all this in. So that will give me enough of a... can come back in and get some dark areas here. Okay, so that, um, I'm going to keep this loose. And I'll come back later and tape up, tape up some of these boards in the front ones anyway. Come back and do something with that. So let's see, rambling chat, rambling thoughts, right? Stuff that, um, Sit. I can sit here and paint all day. John will tell you, right? The, the yes. main limitating factor for me is just how long I can sit here before my knees hurt or something else gives out. bottom section for me is the fun part of the painting, this whole bottom section. I'm, I'm happy to do all this, but the bottom section is what won me over when I decided to paint this. Um, not it's to cause too much. sealing the deal. Yeah, this is kind of, if it, this is okay, but wait till you see the bottom. Wait till you see it. Okay, so do um, you want to open some presents now? Take a little break. Yeah, and we can do that. We can do that and put this away, and we'll. Because again, we've got this bottom section of this painting is going to be so it's be awesome, fun. so neat, so neat. I'm just going to bring it home. 
put your and then, of course on I'm not blender. done with the car or the oh, no. the, the details on the little just um, beginning on the little gas station you probably have guessed we're in Louisiana <coughs> with that no they haven't in the same Michigan and Alaska oh really yeah so you've been you know I, I wasn't gonna say anything okay wait wait Woo! it's a bag nice and it sparkles it's Barclays on this bag. So let's let's there's a card and other stuff. Yeah, in there's there. in here, but I want to get you know pull out the bag here. So you got a real bag, right? It's just not just a flat thing, right? <laughs> you got a bag with little Christmas trees. Okay. And there's a card. Oh, you guys, this is so cool. Oh, and look, there's a little bird here. Gonna make the most of this, you guys. Thank you very much. For those of you who are enjoying our channel, in spite of the Christmas cards and the presents that I'm getting and stuff like that, for those of you enjoying it, we'd like, if you haven't subscribed, we'd love you to, to do that. Uh, on Monday nights, we actually do step-by-step -step tutorials. Here, this is during the story time, we don't, but um, we do. Oh, no, wait. This is one of our, you guys' YouTube tutorials. You guys remember this? Uh, this was a few, you know, like a month or so ago. This is one of the artwork from that. And this is from Cheryl... Um, and Sean, and she says, Ginger and John, thank you so much for the wonderful um, teaching and support from you. Your expert um, knowledge and teachings, and, and as my coach, have helped me um, and uh, become a better painter and a new. You've become an artist. You know, artist. Just a painter. Wait, what does it say here? It says painter. Become a better painter. I right know, there. but she's an artist. Yeah. And added a new dimension to my... Life. Art hugs from Cheryl. There you go. So thank you very much. And then... Uh, uh, this oh, this makes you want, want to visit to the Grand Lakes. The Great Lakes. Great That'd Lakes. Michigan. That'd be Michigan. That'd be Michigan. She's, she's up in Michigan. Uh, thank you so much for this. This is beautiful. And, and there's a gift that comes with it. This should be a Michigan glove. Oh, mm -hmm. uh... A, That's um, how you describe Michigan. Where do you live? It's a hat. Oh, look at this. It's not That's a hat. It's a. No, I mean it's a. It's a. It's a um, looks. That's the UP. Do you not know Michigan? Oh no. my goodness gracious. Okay. Because John's originally from Michigan. There. I was there. John was here. The kids. Kalamazoo. Kids are here. Kids are in Ann Arbor. Where's Charlie? Charlie is just. He's in between these two. Okay. He's up there. I mean, that's where we were. Okay. I used to work over there. Okay, and my dad said he was born in northern Michigan, wherever that That's is. That's the UP. He was up here somewhere. This is where all the mines are. Oh, okay. And look at the air, elk and oh, the yes, bear. Yeah, that's all the animals. Oh, isn't this cute? It's a hot, it's a um, oven glove, oven mitt. I know what that is. John. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank I you, will Cheryl. gladly use it. He was happy. <laughs> we don't actually have an oven mitt. We've got some other things. We don't have one like that. So nope. thank you very much. We'll use it. What a lovely thing. Thank you. Now, I have another gift for you. Okay, one more and then we'll... We, okay, we have two to go. That's all we got left. Okay. Well, you can do one to do a little more painting, then you can do another one. Uh, highways, again, this is our address. If anybody <laughs> is not too late to send in your Christmas card, <laughs> we'll read it on the air. Thank you very much. Okay, wait, wait. Ooh. That's clever. Oh, look at that. Here, we give that your way to you. All little beads. Turn it over, please, so it's right side up. It's what? a gnome. Oh, it's a gnome. <laughs> look at that. I can get, thinking it's an abstract, but this is Magoo here with the eyes. Oh, this is so cute. Look at that. That is so cute. And um, here's the card. Hope we know who it's from. Well, here's the card here. The box over here. Oh, there's a bunny. Look at that. There's a black bunny on it. Isn't that cute? And this is from Judy Webster. She says, Dear Ginger and that John. That came from Canada. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank okay. you for letting me experience. No, the UK. Like, oh, the England? My gosh. That's so far. <laughs> <laughs> That's across the pond. I know, but I mean, it's uh, just really hard. 
uh, thank you for the experience life in the academy, which has gifted me, I've, uh, which you gifted me. I signed up as an orange member and continue to watch you on YouTube tutorials on Monday evening. I don't take part in the game dome challenge. I did this crystal painting instead that you could put in your downstairs bathroom. Wishing you both a peaceful Christmas. Sincerely, Julie Web Judy Webster. This is adorable, you guys. Look at that. That's got a nice little way to hang it. Isn't that cute? Well, I think you you are. I think that's a challenging gnome. That is so cute. Close up, close up. Wait a minute. Mm, look at there. Come on, you guys. Isn't that, that's Judy. That is so clever. And of course, he will be put in our downstairs guest bathroom. Yep. So Take it down with cute. love a bit. Yep, yep. Love it. Keep wrap it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. You want to do the last one? I'll do the last one. Then, uh, you know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you sure this is just an order from Jerry's Artorama, no? No, I, I glanced it to make sure it wasn't. Okay, look at this. Oh, here's the card. Well, you guys, I feel very loved. Thank you so much. Between the donations everybody's made this year for our scholarship fund and for helping us keep the lights on. and uh, Christmas wishes throughout the house. Uh, Debbie Middleton, thank you. Um, ooh. your generosity through this ooh, year. Ooh. Dibby's all, on the cookies. All cookies oh, are yeah, chocolate baby. chip. Who, who dibbied them first? Nicole, you don't get to dibby the cookies. I, no, I dibby them. There's no dibbies on you the dibby cookies. You cookies. I dibby them. I don't see your name on the card. <laughs> Surely that's... I don't see... Debbie. I don't see John <laughs> mentioned anywhere, do you? Who came first? Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Here. Zoom in. Zoom in. <laughs> Who's got dibbies on the cookies? Okay. You betcha. All right. So there's snickle doodles. You don't even like snickle doodles. Oh, look, there's a there's a tumbler. Well, I need a new one. She must have known. And it's um Chaos. Chaos coordinator. That's oh, certainly that's, perfect. that's John. He got someone who solves problems you never knew you existed in ways that will blow your mind. That is John, absolutely. Because we have Chaos. We had somebody write in and say, I would become a member. But I can't use email. But I don't do email. And, you know, that's a problem. Uh, we've had people. Um, well, anyway, we've, we've had the problem We have one that didn't know you scrolled down on the homepage. Yeah, didn't know you scrolled. Thanks, Debbie. And then, of that's course, really there's nice. just me and the problems I cause. So here's some of that, <laughs> you know. So, get that for you, boss. And then we've got. I got a tumbler. This T-shirt that says some people only dream of meeting their meeting their favorite favorite art artist, artist art teacher. Some people only dream of meeting their artist. I teach mine. I teach mine. That's cute. That is cute. What a cute T-shirt. Thank you so much for that. That is beautiful. Good job. Good job. Yes. Paint. Oh my gosh, you guys. Paint markers. Do not, do not know about these. Do not know about the paint markers. All right. John will open that while I'm looking. Keep looking. You can open it. I've been delegated to. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh, look at the cookies. Those are my cookies. No, they're not your cookies. I dippy them. You don't get to I have dippy witnesses. The... My name's on the list He doesn't get to dippy the cookies. This is great, right? You look what you did. In the... <laughs> here, put the cookies back in here. Oh, there's different ones, you guys. That's what she said. I know, but I just saw these, and I was all excited. And they look very... We would share with you guys, but we can't. We got cookie crumbs all over the T-shirt. That's all right. All right, they were clean. All right, so box. now here's box. another T-shirt. Let me just shake, shake off. Shake it the on chunk. the floor, thanks, boss. Yeah, I'm gonna shake it on the floor. No one ever vacuums the floor up here. Anyway, look at this. Oh, John. Oh, this is so cute. A it's tractor a tree. Tractor tree. No, that's perfect. See? Uh, where would you find a tractor tree? Somebody loves you, John. That is so... No, it's for you. 
That is you so. You will wear it on, <laughs> set, on, on the show on Saturday. <laughs> or tractor Monday. tree. This is so cute. All right. I've never seen a tractor tree. And then we got a book. That's nice. I like tractor Called The Inheritance by Nora Roberts. So this must have been one of your favorite books. I like Nora Roberts. So thank you. A real hardback book. Who, um, the Lost Bridal Trilogy. The Lost Bridal one. Trilogy. So thank you so much. This is great. So, wow. Wow. You guys are just too much. Too much. Too much. Too much. Anybody and of course we got those great cookies tree. from Judy, which we ate the first week they came. <laughs> so yours was fortuitous because Judy sent yeah, us some we were cookies. Out of cookies. And we're out of cookies because we ate them all. <laughs> we have no self-control <laughs> at all. You're back to that. So we're back to that, but you know what? It's six o'clock, babe. So, you mean you're quitting? Well, I think we'll stop for the day. It's just, you know, we'll stop for the okay. day, but I will well, down here. Wait till you, you see what any, we do. With any this. kind of coating down there? You still have to no, see I, no, I need that. I need that all all reflections down here. Okay. So that I need this just the way it is, and it can this can dry really well. So um, I can go back and add the detail to the store. And uh, put in my gas pump and some of this other stuff. Uh, so that's kind of cool, right? Yes and yes. And then if it's dry enough, it'll take the tape so that um, I can tape these uh, posts so they are fairly straight and get some, get my sign up here, so forth. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about this. I thank you guys very much for hanging out with Storytime. Uh, normally we d don't do a lot of. Uh, cards and gifts and stuff like that because we only just got those but um, normally just if you story time there's not a lot of that kind of interruption but for me that was so fabulous and for those of you who um, are watching I want to John and I wish everybody a fabulous uh, holiday no matter what holiday you celebrate and we'll be with you on Christmas Day and I think I'm painting a dog uh, for That's Christmas. what we have it slated for right now, and, and, and you can, um, but it could change to something else. I, unless I find something else even neater, and then we won't be painting the dog. <laughs> but right now I've got this dog that I want to paint for, you know, this is really cute, and it'll be like tutorial-like, and we'll talk and have a good time. And, and of course, my daughter Cinnamon the Archer, but it will be coming on, I think, she one thought, around 1 o'clock Eastern time. And um, so then that would put us uh, around Ours six. Ours should be 2 to 2.30. Two, 2 to 2. So what, if she's doing 1, it would be her 3, that's our 2. Yeah, our 2 to 2.30 is when we should be going on. Well, she said that she would be about two and a half hours. That's why we're between 2 and 2.30. Is it? <laughs> say say good night, Okay, Gracie. yeah, good night, you guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. <laughs> Subscribe, share, tell everybody. Bye. Tell everybody what? They were crazy? That this is a great time to spend. It was a good time to spend with us. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We will catch you on the next exciting story time or live show. Um, just look for our email. We never know where we're going to do it. Stream has ended. It was like three hours, wasn't it?